As I was telling you in another video, I am a Brit, but I have been living here in Germany for 11 gazillion years. And there's a strange thing that happens when you've been living in another country for so long that when you go back to your country of birth, you experience reverse culture shocks. Here are my top five. <laughs> Quite some time ago now, I did a video about culture shocks when arriving from the UK to live in Germany. You can find that video if you click on this link. To be honest, it's a video I should update and I think I'll be doing a new version on that soon. This video is the entire opposite then. I've been living in Germany for a long time. I hold dual nationality. I am British and German and I now experience culture shocks when I go back to England. Before we do start, if you do enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe and you can also support me further by signing up on Patreon for the monthly Q&A. So let's get started then. These are the top five things that I find culturally really weird when I go back to the UK because I'm just so used to living here in Germany. Number one, shaking hands. In Germany I have just got used to this really practical, really standard form of greeting people. Yeah, hallo, grüß dich, na wie ist die Lage, alles fit? Pretty much everybody shakes hands here, whether you're meeting friends, whether it's a really formal situation, going to a job interview, you're uh, in a business meeting or whatever, everybody shakes hands. Even family members to a large extent, okay, good friends will hug, but then you pretty much know where the boundaries are. In Germany you have something to do with your hands when you meet somebody, it's like, and then when you're saying goodbye, you shake hands again and bugger off home. And in the UK we don't really do any of this handshaking, in fact we don't do anything, it's really weird. I, I must, it must have been normal for me at some point but if you go out, you've arranged to meet friends down the pub or something, you all arrive and you just say hello but you just sort of stand around, it's like, hiya, you alright, hiya, little, a little weird uncomfortable wave sometimes but it has to be really exceptional circumstances or a really good friend for you to to hug them i i've kind of taken to hugging all my english friends and i think they think it's a bit weird when i go over in this case i don't think it's so much the handshaking thing because in spain it's different it's just the the existence of a custom something to do there's there's just like this void in england where you you encounter people and you just stand sort of a short distance away going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hello mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in Spain I'd know where I stand. You give the people of the opposite sex a kiss left and right and shake hands with the people of the same sex. You English, you're weird! Do something! Number two, guten appetit. Now in Germany before a meal we all say to each other guten appetit. Just like the French say bon appetit, we wish everybody a good appetite. Enjoy your meal. Now in England we haven't got that. You sit down to eat a meal and every time I sit down and we start a meal with my family or whatever and I'm over to visit I want to say guten appetit but I'm searching for this expression and it just doesn't exist. Uh, I think that most you could probably use the French for bon appetit but then people will look at you weird and go hmm look at him speaking French hmm weirdo. Again it's one of these cultural voids. Why have we got so little convention, so little customs, What's where's our traditions gone, where's our little habits that just make life nicer? Guten Appetit! I think what happens in the end is that um, both me and my wife we end up saying Guten Appetit to everybody and saying in Germany before we eat a meal we say Guten Appetit. It's just nice. What's wrong with us Brits? We're mental. The only real equivalent in the English language is have a nice meal, but that's only really something that waiting staff would tell you. Your waiter would come bring you your, your dinner if you're eating out in a restaurant and they'd say, here, enjoy your meal, have a nice meal or whatever. You can't really say it to people that you're eating with. Number three, bitteschön or something like you're welcome. Again, it's one of those little voids in the English culture or the English language. We haven't really got an equivalent of, well, we have got an equivalent of it, Saying bitter in Germany, thank you is danke, or danke schön, or vielen Dank, something like that. And there's always a response to that meaning more or less you're welcome. Bitte, bitte schön, um, bitte sehr. And we don't really do it in English. But what I do notice is that the Americans do do it. They use you're welcome quite a lot. And this is my very scientific theory about the influence of German immigrants in the USA on their language. Because it's pretty standard practice if you go to the USA and you thank some somebody for something, you will quite often hear, you're welcome. Fantastic American accent of mine, isn't it? And it's a real culture shock for me when I go back to England because I find myself wanting to do it even more and more and more and say, bitte schön, bitte sehr, and then your welcome comes out. 
and everybody looks at me weird and says, oh, look at him speaking all American. Hey, Richie, from the other camera angle, why are you so camp? I don't know, you invented me. Mm, fair enough, I suppose. This is probably a subject for a video on its own, but um, I think there's quite a lot of evidence of influence of German speakers on the English language and the in the American culture in the USA. For instance, one that just springs to mind, just like this whole your custom of saying you're welcome thing, is in England, if you're good at gardening, we have green fingers. In Germany, you have a grün Daum, a green thumb. And in the USA, what do you have? That's right, Richie, it's a green thumb. We say that too. Mind blown. But well, let's get back on track then and get back to my reverse culture shocks in the UK and number one, two, three, four, number four, no separate bills. It was actually one of my culture shocks when I came over here in the first place that it's quite normal when you go out to eat with friends, go out to a bar with friends to ask for a separate bill when it comes to paying. Now that is very, very unusual in the UK or you have to announce it beforehand, speak to the waiter beforehand and say, look, we're two different groups. We'd like separate bills. Can you write down the take note of the food separately so that we can have two bills at the end. In Germany it's absolute standard practice. Even if there are just two of you, you're out with your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your brother, your sister, whoever, just two of you out to eat, the waitress or waiter will come at the end and say Zahlen Sie zusammen oder getrennt? And then you can decide whether one of you treats the other or you're going to pay separately. No big deal, really easy. And usually that's also a way to get better tips because each party tips a little bit themselves. They're not stupid, these Germans. Nein, das sind wir nicht. Wir sind ganz intelligent. A final culture shock then, and we're staying in the realm of catering, going out to eat and drink, etc. Number five, queuing at bars and pubs with no waiting staff. As anyone who has been to the UK will no doubt know, in the UK we have a very rich pub tradition and I love English pubs, old English pubs, old English ales, etc, etc, the atmosphere in pubs, great. But there's one thing I have to say that here over in Germany, and I think pretty much all of continental Europe, this is just a weird UK thing and a real culture shock for me nowadays, is that it's a lot more convenient, a lot more customer friendly to have waiting service, people serving you at the tables. In the UK, of course, if you want a drink, you have to go up to the bar and you have to carry like loads of glasses over the table if you're buying around. And, and if it's a busy Saturday night on in an in, inner city pub, somewhere in the center of town, it's not so bad maybe in the local village pub or whatever that's not gonna be so crowded, but really going out and having to battle to get your drink and no waiting stuff. <sighs> It's a lot better over here, I must say. And it's a real culture shock. I just want to sit down and have a beer. Even in the dingiest dives, in the what the Germans would call Pitten und Spielunken, you get served at your table, it's no problem. And surely the first traditional pub with waiting service would be brilliant in England, wouldn't it? Now there's a business idea. Civilized pubs. That's it from me for this video. Five little culture shocks that I generally do experience when I go back to England and visit my family. I'd love to hear from you, of course, down in the comments. What do you find weird? Maybe you're German and you visited the UK before. What did you find really surprising when you went over there? Or maybe you're like me, you're not from Germany, but you've got used to some of the little customs. And when you go back to your, your home country, you have the same kind of shocks as me. Anything you'd like to add, anything I've missed, comment down below. And of course, if you did like the video, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also support the channel further by signing up on Patreon for the monthly Q&A. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bis dann, mach's gut, Leute!